This video will be a little bit different today. I just got a new MacBook Pro, and in order to run all the programs that I want, like AutoCAD Civil 3D and Bluebeam, I had to download Parallels Desktop, and I kind of just wanted to film a little video as I'm doing it, because I know maybe a lot of you out there are MacBook users, or maybe you're about to get a MacBook, and I just kind of wanted to walk through the processing speed and to see how simple it is to navigate some of these programs using Parallels. By no means is any of this video sponsored by Parallels, Bluebeam, or AutoCAD, but I'm already talking talking enough, so let's dive right into it. All right, so if you don't know what Parallels is, Parallels is this company right here, and what I did was I, I essentially downloaded the Parallels desktop for Mac, and by the way, this is the MacBook Pro M4 Pro chip. I think it's the one with 14 cores. And I know I wanted to make some more content for you guys and keep this train moving, so I downloaded Parallels Desktop for Mac. It was actually a pretty quick download. And then I went right over to Bluebeam and got the latest Bluebeam subscription. I think it's around $330 a year. And then the Parallels subscription is $75 per year. So once I downloaded the Parallels, I was able to hit this window Windows 11 app here. And essentially what I've done is I've done a view up here where I'm in coherence, meaning my Mac OS and this Windows OS now is just in full coherence. So I can switch back between the operating systems if I wanted to, but I kind of like this seamless integration of the coherence. I'm easily able to open up Bluebeam here and it looks like it's operating straight from my MacBook, which I like. So let's kind of figure some of this stuff out. So here's my Bluebeam. Any of you guys have been following my channel, I do a lot of civil engineering content. So I use Bluebeam a lot for quantity takeoffs. I mean, it is my PDF viewer. Let's go over here to some of our recent files. So I've taken some time to set up my toolbars up here and some of these little icons. I do have videos of this if you're interested, but I kind of just wanted to see how smooth this is going to be. So let's open up some of this. So do not show, would you like to remove them? So this is uh, this is one of my senior design projects that I made a video about. Um, so I just kind of wanted to see the, the smoothness of the operating system and see how everything moves throughout here. So I would say, I mean, everything's pretty fast at first. Let's see if we can do some different leaders. Let's see if we get any lag. So here I can do a little multi-leader. Let's do something and say, great. Let's see what else we got. I'm gonna do a cloud. Okay, perfect. Okay, and I have to use control. So I can't use command. I gotta use control for some of these different things. So everything everything is operating pretty smooth. Now, if you're here to get more of like a Bluebeam crash course, one thing that I don't really like is when I'm doing my two fingers, it zooms. I kind of want the two fingers to be a scroll. So if you want to update that, you can go to preferences. Let's figure this out. I got some sort of USB storage. Okay, here's another thing about parallels. Whenever you connect things, like when I connected my microphone, it was asking, does it wanna be connected to Mac or Windows 11? I did Mac because I have this mic connected to our GarageBand, but where to connect this USB device? I don't even know what USB device is even connected. I guess I'll go with Mac. Again, this is all new to me. I have never downloaded Parallels, so this video is good for anyone who decides to download Parallels. We might be learning a little bit throughout here. Okay, so Bluebeam General Navigation. So this is exactly what I wanted. So single page mode and then continuous mode. So single page mode. So let's, let's do both of these to scroll. Single page mode. I'm gonna press okay and let's see if that that did it. Okay, perfect. So now my two fingers on the Mac is more for a scroll. Now what I'm gaining with this is that it's a little bit laggy. Okay, so like a two finger drag like this is the typical scroll. I'm scrolling through the sheets and this is exactly what I wanted. However, if you do the two finger pinch, that's what zooms in and out. So that that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So if you wanted it to be like that, just make sure you go to your preferences, general, navigation, scroll, and scroll. There's other things that I like too in here. I really love auto sizing the text box and call out markups. Let me just show you what that does if you don't uncheck it. So let's say if I were to do something here and say, cool, all right, let's get a little box on here. So do you see this box? So it didn't automatically adjust. I don't love that because if you just keep it here, you're gonna have to adjust it every time. So you can go to preferences, tools and you can do auto size 
And then now whenever I do a, another little call out, I can do cool. Do you see how it automatically adjusted that little uh, three dots there? Maybe if I set one of these as my, as my default. All right, so let's actually set this as my default. You can set it as a default if you go to properties up here. That means all of my callouts will look just like that. So I'm gonna go set as default. Now watch me do just another call out. You see how it automatically adjusted? So I, I really like having that auto adjust. I actually really love my crosshair. So if you wanna show the crosshair, I believe it's view, and then you can go full screen crosshair right here. So I really love that. It's helpful for any engineers if you're doing measurements or kind of trying to align something. So I actually don't really love that properties toolbar that displays up there. To me, it's just clunky, but it's all preference for you guys. You notice how when I was doing these callouts up here, I got all of this stuff. I personally don't love looking at all that. I kind of just like controlling everything in my properties, but this is totally up to you. I think in order to delete this, I can go to tools, toolbars, and I believe it's this property toolbars. Let's uh, check that. All right, so boom. So that that totally wiped away. Now if I ever do a markup, I don't see all of that stuff pop up. I like controlling things with my properties, but again, it's all personal to what you want. That's honestly all I have for today, guys. My next video will be to analyze the speed of AutoCAD Civil 3D. I'm gonna download that next. I thought this video would be helpful for anyone who plans to purchase a MacBook Pro or has a MacBook Pro and has been thinking about downloading certain Windows-only operating system programs. I'm sorry if this wasn't too technical, but I was just very curious. I just got the MacBook, just downloaded these software, so I'm really interested in creating creating more content for you guys. If you have any more questions about the technicality or want the rundown of the price again, I can totally put that in the description or comment back to you. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.